allowed. Okay. If you don't like it, you can leave. It says. <laughs> okay. This is the uh, finance committee select board meeting um, concerning the budget. Um, first piece of business would be to approve the meeting minutes of February 15th. Um, do I have a motion? I move that February 15th minutes be approved. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Donna? Aye. Aye. Jim? Aye. Myself? Aye. If I follow the procedural question, if we have no one who is actually remote voting at the moment. Sure. So there's no one remote at this point in time. Right. Let's see. So anybody that's remote will see okay. it on the top of the screen there. So we don't need all the roll call votes if no one's voting remote. It's true. <laughs> point well argued. All right. So I move that the March 8th minutes be approved. Second. I saw it. I have one amendment. I was not. Okay. I was not present. You were not present. So it's just the three of us. That's not a quorum. So we will have to hold off. Now you, 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 you have a quorum. Just one member will abstain. So that's so, so that fits. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, then we'll do the roll call again. March 8th, 2000. Aye. 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 Donna, Aye. we have, I mean, sorry. she abstained, Aye. but we have yes. three ayes and one abstention for the, uh, for the minutes. Okay. We will now review and discuss special town meeting warrant for March 23rd, 2022. Uh, Ryan, you should take it. All right. So the select board called a special town meeting warrant for March 23rd, 2022 at 6 o'clock p.m. It'll be here at the town offices. So the I guess the impetus for the for the schedule of the town meeting was uh, the desire of the community preservation committee to pay off the remaining debt on the town hall. Okay. Um, so that's the reason why we called the special town meeting. And um, they also suggested that we vote on a few time sensitive uh, CPA projects, mm -hmm. recommendations from the CPC that would have been funded, uh, what would have been voted on at the end of the topic, which has gotten moved back a month, as we know. Sure. Um, so there's three articles, uh, three CPA articles, and two articles related to the library accessibility improvement project. Okay. Um, so I'll just run through these and then we can discuss yeah. them. Article one is to appropriate transfer the sum of uh, $116,928 um, as follows, 67,292 from the Community Preservation Fund Fund Reserve Fund Balance and 49,636 from the Community Preservation Fund Budgeted Reserves to make an additional payment on the one-year note for the Town Hall Historic Rehabilitation Project. So this additional money um, in combination with uh, the 43,000 that's typically that was appropriated at the last annual town meeting would pay off that debt completely. Okay. Um, and that debt, uh, you know, that that payment is due in the middle of April, so it couldn't wait for the end of the meeting. Article two is to transfer an appropriate sum of uh, $13,530 from the CPA on reserve fund balance for improvements to town and cemeteries. So this is to, uh, to install and repair some fencing at the cemeteries and install benches. Uh, that's an item that's on one of our, it's one of our capital items. So it's um, article three, um, to appropriate and transfer the sum of $60,323. Uh, I won't read where it's from. Uh, some from the open space reserves and uh, some from the MSR fund balance for accessibility improvements at Hurley Park. So this is the, this is the third step in the, the process that we've had to go through, third, second. Um, this is for the accessibility improvements at Hurley. The town has a, a grant for, I believe it's just over 65,000 to uh, pave the parking lot, uh, stripe it, handicapped accessibility, parking, those types of things. Um, just install a sidewalk from the parking lot to the restrooms and renovate the restrooms to uh, make them handicap accessible. So 
um, we had a, the town had a special town meeting in the fall, and we needed to um, show that we had this monies available. So there's there's monies that are town monies that are appropriated for to pay for the town share of this, but those are going to be replaced by the the CPA money, and those monies town monies uh, will go back to the general fund to the general fund to pre cash. So the, it was really just a placeholder that we needed to do for the fall to show we had the money. Right. Um, so those will come back. Um, Article four, uh, transfer the sum of five thousand dollars from available funds to pay for the cost of accessibility improvements to the library. Um, so this would be five thousand dollars to. Um, I need to be able to see it. This this is essentially a. Uh, contingency for their project um, or a, a part of a contingency for the project. They ran into some issues um, when they opened up the cement floor to, to create the elevator shaft. So there were concerns about change orders there. Yeah. Um, originally, this was a much larger ask. Uh, this was originally 20,000. Um, in, in subsequent conversations I had with them, um, we discovered that the town had initially appropriated, and I'll just get to Article 5 now. Um, 35,000 um, at the April 30th, 2019 meeting. Uh, but their, their design costs were only 21,000. So there was $14,000 that was gonna be left over in that account of already appropriated funds. So article five is to repurpose those funds instead of seeking new ones and then these returning back after the project. So article five is just to repurpose those funds for construction. Um, right now, I don't, I don't know that any change orders have been um, executed in the project, um, but right now they have a very small contingency that it's certainly not good practice to go forward with in any of any of these monies from, from Article 4 or Article 5 that are on spam would return back to the, the town. Okay. Any questions about these articles before? No. Okay, now, in the past, we have not had to vote on CBC models. That's, that's still the case. But that was the position of the finance committee in right. the past, correct? Okay. So it's up to you what you want to do with one, one through three, it's up to you. Four and five in the past, you've definitely taken a position on. Um, so moving forward, Jim, can you take Article 4 to read that one more time? See if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $5,000 from available funds to pay for the costs of accessibility improvements to the White Dickinson Library, including without a insulation and a lift and renovations to the restrooms. Once again, are there any questions? Okay, we'll take a vote on this. Donna? Aye. Yeah. Yes. Jim? Yes. Yes. It's passed. Uh, Are you selecting on that Brenda is going to be a remote? Oh, yeah. Brenda just joined. Who did? Brenda. Yeah. Brenda Doherty. Oh, Brenda, how you doing? So now you have to go to roll call. So now we will go. What you just did, right? So, oh, right. But maybe right. Brenda would like to vote. Brenda, we, uh, were you able to hear Article 4 that we're voting on? We can't hear you. I think you're muted. I think you're on mute. Yeah. She's, still, she's still on mute. Well, it passes even if she goes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. Okay, let's go to Article 5. Donna, could you take Article 5 and read that, please? Uh, to see if the town will vote to amend the vote under Article 12 of the warrant for the April 30th, 2019 annual town meeting, which appropriated funds to pay for the design of handicapped accessibility improvements at the S. White Dickinson Memorial Library to include the additional purpose of paying for the costs to construct and install handicapped accessibility improvements at the library and to authorize the expenditure of $16,836.51 of the unexpended appropriated funds for such improvements. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Donna? Aye. Yeah. 
Yes. Jim? Yes. Myself? Yes. And Brenda? Are you there? Okay. Still be passes. So move. All righty. Next. Um, okay. Next, we'll get into the budgets. And um, first budget we have is our fire department. And we have the chief here. Gotta get on camera. Come on, you gotta get your sure. Sit over here, sit over here. Sit over here. Sit over there. 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 Sit over because <laughs> yeah. the camera didn't switch when Donna was talking, but it switched when. If they if they don't want to, yeah, talk softly if you don't want the camera to switch. Here. All right, John, welcome to uh, the annual budget meeting. Thank you, and uh, good to see you. And um, we've got the budget in front of us. Um, tell us the overall health of the fire department. I think it's well. I yeah. think um, we're, I don't know if we're making leaps and bounds. We made it through, we made it through COVID. We only had a couple of our guys made it, came we tested positive. Yeah. But everybody, everybody's good now, and now we're out of the we're on the downhill slide. They're, uh, there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. There's still a lot out there. Oh, well, not, no, new subject. Okay. New subject. Well, last year we uh, made, it, made it through uh, Berkshire Gas, had a flaring operation. They upgraded their plant across the street and they had to burn off all their excess gas. Well, that was a learning curve for everybody involved and they wanted to, uh, a fire truck to stand by while they lit up the sky for, 20 hours ish, which with four guys. So we created a detail rate and, and procedures wanted to do that. And lo and behold, at the same time, they shot a movie and they wanted a detail officer, fire officer at that at the same, at the same time. So we made it through that. That's okay. Um, last year, we also have, uh, we, we raised marijuana in Whitney now, yes. legally. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Laugh is sorry. <laughs> so, and after that, now um, that was the that was an easy inspection. Now, uh, oh, and we're going to sell it. I guess we have a store that's ready to open. If they, as soon as they put marijuana in it, they'll it'll be okay. And then there's another one scheduled to go in, and but the real tie up that the fire department sees is the processing. Of marijuana from the plant to plant, I say the bud to the gummy worms, if you will. <coughs> oh, yeah. Well, however, as it has this material process that they want to use, and they're set up at Three River Road in Whaley, East Whaley, and the, the um, what they call pods are like two tractor trailer boxes that they set on the ground, is what they, they call them pods. They, um, they're supposed to come with fire protection systems. Well, they ordered these out of California. They're not acceptable in Massachusetts. But boy. Therefore, so presently they're down there with what they're doing is an ice wash. They're extracting the THC with ice instead of using. There you go. Um, I don't, and I'm not sure when this is going to happen. And I told Brian when day one, I said, this is like above me. I don't know what's going on. So my first phone call was to the engineers at the fire marshal's office and she's right there. So, I mean, she's very good. They know what, they know what they're doing. They're, they know what they're talking about. And then the next procedure is to get the system up and running before they build out into the old shop, into the old scenery fair. So, um, 
now they've got greenhouses. I don't know how many exactly they have going down there, but yes. Okay. That's, that's what I've been doing. That's what you've been doing. <laughs> and it's like such a huge learning curve. You know, it's like yeah. it's not about putting out a fire anymore. Uh -huh. We go to West Wrigley and put out a barn fire, and it seems easy. And you did a nice job. Yeah. Too. Thank you. you. It's just, it seems easy. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, oh, and then the next thing in the fire department is one more thing, and then we'll, I don't know, you can Go ask ahead. questions or not. Radio systems. I know that uh, fire department has over $150,000 worth of radios installed within its possession in the last year. I got to tell you, when I started, we started on three radio systems ago. And that's another learning curve. It's just like, you just barely learned how to run the old radios. And now these are going to go away. Mm. And now we're going to talk about capital planning. You see pages on the capital planning? Um, They're always there. No, they haven't been always there. Because, <clears throat> I shouldn't say this, but I will. The FRCOG is running this. And they're running the fire service today with a radio system. They're going to unhitch the patch between the 800 megahertz and the 400 megahertz radios. Our pagers are presently 400 megahertz, and our new radios are 800 megahertz. And we can use both of them, they patch them together somewhere in a cloud. Mm -hmm. I think it's not really in a cloud, it's on a tower somewhere, but I don't, I've never seen it, don't know how to do it. But April 1st, that's coming down. I've been told that. The pages they will still maintain they will still page over the pages for these things that we wear on our sides that get us they go off when there's a fire fall that's activated by shelter control so that's the cap that's my capital planning for this year okay um you want to give us a little overview of the actual budget that we have in front of us that's going to meet the needs of the Marijuana and industry, the I don't think the marijuana industry is in there. Um, actually, what you have in front of you is just what I've spent last year, and if I see anything else on top of that, it was there's not much in there on an increase. <clears throat> okay, we'll open the floor up to questions from John concerning the fire department. Oh, I got a question. So Comcast is hiking up rates, I, I guess, for everybody, right? I hate Comcast. What? <laughs> it's not that I hate them. They build a month in advance, yeah. and I can never catch up with them. It's just like, oh my God. But anyways. That is the correct, that is the correct amount. Yeah. I think John, you had 780 for a while, and that was a placeholder. Then we finally got you internet in the fire station. Oh, I did because okay. I'll catch monthly bill. It's 10844, so times that by 12. Gotcha. I do have internet in the fire station. Bucks a year. So you know, when it, and, 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 you know, I talk about the fire department. This is uh, the next couple of three months where the fire department is knee deep in our 250th celebration. We're putting on chicken barbecue. We're putting on a parade. We're put on fire, fireman's muster. That you know, not how much of this is going to come on my budget, but that's right. There's if we do anything, there will be improvements to the fire station, like you know, electricity meter. This, which is the people are protected, though. Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, right. And is this the real? Uh, so when it comes to FERCOG, is this our total assessment from them for the radios? Yeah. It's, um, we got well, thousand. not really. It never is. Did you, you didn't change them, did you, Brian, before you printed them? Change what? This is the budget you gave me. Yeah, we always get the FRCOG assessment after my budget goes in. So, okay. I did not change it. Sorry to be so slow, John. The Comcast internet of $1,400. What does that entail? It's just the internet in the fire station. So why'd that go up? Uh, that's, that's the, the rate. That's, that's the, the true number. The 780 was 
was it to turn up? If you got the expenses in 21, mm -hmm. it's 13, 18, 12. He got it. They pay about one away 44. The, the 780 was a placeholder that he had moving forward. And it, I guess it didn't get changed until this year. Thank you. Well, you didn't get internet until last year. Got internet. John, what's the, uh, give us a little rundown of what's involved with water ice rescue. Um, it doesn't seem to be an expenditure yet. There is an appropriation. What's I mean? The ice rescue suits don't last forever. And I, I believe the vote is on that on that same line item. We know that uh, the ice rescue suits didn't get replaced this year because we haven't needed them. But they yeah they, they're starting to leak. They need to be replaced as for that. Put my guys out on the ice and you know, whatever the case may be. So even if it's cold water, they don't. I mean, they can use the ice rescue suits. So you have to replace that ice rescue suit every so often. I, and I don't know that exactly that. So you, you maintain? Um, we maintain two suits, yes. So we put a crew on the, on the ice. They probably didn't replace the same turn out here by the, the state mandate every so many years. Usually when, when they start to leak, they're time to go back. <laughs> they, you know, the newest thing that they have to do. Does it say for the mandate? I think it also on the same year. I don't know off the top of my head. Yes. The, uh, and are they expensive? Those suits? Yeah. I'm not, I don't know the answer to that, Paul. I'm sorry. But I mean, just as I don't bet you they're $2,000 a piece. Yeah. They, they probably have one. Some of them might have heaters in them now. I don't know. I, they put heaters in everything today. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions for John? No. Nope. All right. John, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that's great. Okay. Next on the agenda is the Recreation Committee. Oh, we reminded him, all right? Yes. What time do we tell him? Oh, six fifteen. Okay. Well, I will move on to the next one. And pop okay, maybe I come in. Treasurer Collector. That is here. Hello, Lynn. Hello. Here. Hope all is well. Ah, uh, everything is good. Yeah, terrific. Okay. Um, Treasurer of course, let me find it. Here Okay, here we are. Um, thank you. We've got a 6.99% increase. Um, tell us and town of Waitley a little bit about the budget, if you could. Okay, I think the main, main increase um, on the budget is for additional staff time. Um, as you might be aware, I plan on retiring next February. And as this budget would be going from, you know, through that time period, I was hoping that we might be able to do some cross training with the new treasurer collector before the end of the year. This would be a one shot um, cost to the town. Uh, but I did it for six weeks of working, two people working at the same time. Um, and that should, get your new treasurer collector up to speed. Um, most of the other increases are minimal and based on my previous expenses from FY21. Um, I did just have to buy, uh, normally I get my envelopes from the 
jail. They print them for me. They are unable to get them. So I had to buy them at the printers at a cost of almost $600. So, <laughs> and I do that twice a year. So um, hopefully the jail will start getting their envelopes back. Uh, it's all um, supply and demand at this point. Um, other than that, the um, software, I put in 9,000. Again, you may, um, part of the capital plan is to replace the software. Um, what I have now is very outdated. And um, from what I've seen of the company, they have no intentions of upgrading it to anything more modern. Uh, it's kind of limited on what I can do with it. I can't uh, take bills and post them online like a lot of other towns do. Um, so I think it was time to uh, make a change there. Uh, so I put in $9,000. That seems to be a pretty good estimate based on the other, the companies, um, the other companies we're dealing with for um, that I look for estimates for as well. Right now, point is $8,600. Um, and um, depending on which company I go with, uh, it may be actually cheaper than that for um, a yearly fee. And other than that, the, the changes are kind of minimal. Um, so unless you have specific questions. Anyone have a question for Lynn? I, I just have clarification that the, the $9,000 is for the annual Correct. Fee, not not for the software. Right, fee. exactly. It's the annual fee. Right. So Lynn, overall sure that was clear. is the is the office in good shape? I've actually um, now that I've increased my hours after I gave up the town clerk job, I, I increased my hours with the treasurer collector and I'm getting quite a few outstanding things done like tax takings and um, uh, doing tailings, which are people who haven't cashed their checks. I have to research them all and send letters. And I, I'm actually, I now have the time to do some of that stuff. So, and I'm hoping to get it all cleaned up for whoever takes over for me. And they won't be uh, burdened with those long lasting, uh, I inherited it, most of it. So <laughs> it's been going on for several years as far as like um, the checks that have never been cashed and things like that. So I'm working diligently at getting those cleaned up. Uh, tax takings have, um, I'm working with my tax taking attorney and we've collected a number of past tax takings. Um, I just sent uh, four more accounts off to land court um, for the final stages, they basically land, um, no houses. Um, and I, um, I think last year we paid off $36,000 in tax takings. And this year I've done, let's see, six, since Jan, um, since January, probably $20,000 in tax takings. I didn't write that figure down. I forgot to do that, so. but we're getting there. Perfect. Um, I did have another question, but I, um, I guess that is it. Um, do, you, do you have a date when you think you might be? I'm aiming for February 28th of next year. So there's plenty of time. <laughs> a lot to do in the meantime. It'll go by fast. Uh, <laughs> you can handle it. <laughs> okay, any uh, any questions before we wrap this down? Oh, I, have, I have one highlight. Um, I, you've explained why the increase in the top line, the treasurer collector sells, but salary, but it looks like the assistant treasurer collector salary is well they the treasurer collector and the assistant treasurer collector are are left until the personnel committee updates those um the one that i'm talking about is the staff changes 
So that staff change is to add uh, six weeks of additional pay um, so that we can train together a new yes. treasurer collector. I see that the five thousand dollars. So that the, the change in balance between the treasurer collector and the assistant treasurer collector has already taken place. It's for this. It's taken place this year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that was when when. when it used when, to be twenty twenty. Right. She didn't want to be town clerk any longer, so we had to split right. the position. Right. Okay. But did a good job of overlapping and sort of mix matching hours to make sure everything got done. Yep. But when we split those, we switched more hours to the treasurer collector and away from the assistant treasurer collector. We balance that. Right. Okay. And Lynn, will you be involved in the uh, search process or the interviewing process for your replacement? I don't know. Nothing has been. We haven't discussed that yet, I guess. So. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there are no final questions. Thank you again and uh, job well done. Um, and we'll see you around here. Thank well, you. I may be sticking around because you've got a lot of other budgets that I'm in charge of as well. So I'll be sticking around. All right. So we go from here to uh, insurance benefits. Did anybody have anybody dig up a page on that yet? It's section six. Section six. All of it. Oh, <laughs> the whole thing. Yes, it is. One B. Then I like to take turns talking about these if you want. What was that? We'll take we can take turns talking about this. I'll okay. talk about something. Um, Okay, why don't, why don't you guys just start and, and go through it because you, you know this is an exercise, it's not just for the finance committee, it's not a recording for all of the taxpayers and waiting. So right. go. So number one is property and liability insurance, and that's what we have through Maya. So that's um, we insure our uh, real property, personal property, and liability insurance, like uh, boards and liability insurance that insures everybody here, school committee, select board, any of our boards, zoning boards, plan board, uh, if nobody would ever do it, but if somebody did something that got them sued, they would have protection as long as it's within the scope of their job, scope of their duties and responsibilities, right? Um, so they have really poor timing every year. Um, we usually don't get exact figures till uh, closer to May. Hopefully we'll have some uh, before the annual town meeting, but. Um, what I was told was to plan for a six to seven percent increase. Um, right now, I budgeted for a five percent increase because um, I looked at actuals from 22, and we could get by with a uh, five percent increase from that amount. So that's what's shown here. We do. We are given so Maya, Massachusetts, she's on interlocal the insurance agency. I want to say interscholastic <laughs> athletic uh, <laughs> um, is the it's a it's a member cooperative <laughs> group that ensures uh, the great majority of municipalities uh, and we get participation in dividend credits. So we'll have probably around four like a four thousand dollar credit probably probably to start the year. Um, so even if it comes in a little bit over this, we can apply some of those credits to that. And a lot of this is based on, you know, it's, it's based on claims. Um, when we have claims, we pay for them for the next couple of years, um, how insurance works. Um, so that's that's showing 5% there. I'll defer to Lynn on the health insurance stock. Okay, the health insurance, um, well, the good news is, again, they didn't raise um, premiums for the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust. I think this is four years in a row, maybe. Um, so when I calculated everything, we're actually um, appropriating less this year than we did last year. Uh, and generally um, there are, let's see, there's, uh, 
there are nine, about 17 participants at the school and there are nine participants um, for town employees. And then there are 12, 16 retirees that are benefited um, through the, the town. Um, the, the rates haven't changed. I do always add in an extra plan or two just in case uh, employees change or someone's hired that to replace someone who didn't have insurance and, the, and they want insurance. So there's a little bit of a buffer in here. Um, I usually do one family plan and one single plan as an addition. Um, but still, even with those additions, we're asking for less under the health insurance this year. I think last year we included the, um, we weren't quite sure if there was gonna be an increase. So that was included last year. This year, it's not. Any questions? Well, actually it is. There, I did include an increase. Um, uh, $8,000, 2% increase. So it could actually, if you had to, you could go down a little bit more. But on this, on the sheet I have in front of you, Lynn, you have a um, minus 5.35. So it right. came, came down a little bit. Right, because uh, last year, I think we had calculated more um, of an increase in the premiums. So we upped that to 430,000. And then we, this year we're lowering it again. Great, great. Medicare and social security. That's pretty standard. It's based on a percentage of payroll. Um, so it's 1.45% of payroll. Does that mean that this line and other lines that are formulated are low now because we haven't seen, we haven't yet applied the... the right. Um, it should be, there's a little bit of a buffer in there, not much. Um, we can recalculate that. The hardest thing is we, um, when we first started doing Medicare, we forgot to include the grant employees because they weren't included in the budget part. So when you did your 1.45% of the budget, budgeted salaries, it didn't include the grant salaried people. So now we've got a little bit of buffer in there to include those grant salaried people. But depending on how high those, um, the payroll is increasing, we might, we might want to consider a little bit more in that. Um, you know, it, it, I didn't take into consideration any COLA or anything when I calculated, so. All right, any questions on Medicare and Social Security? Okay, workers' comp insurance. This is another my uh, insurance policy that we have. Um, and again, they're recommending this six to seven percent increase um i calculated that five percent increase should be fine um and again it's claims driven uh we have a major claim that can't really say much more about over the past couple of years and i mean that causes premiums to rise in yeah. future years so uh, yo five percent it is any questions on work this call okay life insurance uh, that would be me again. Uh, life insurance is the, the town pays half of the basic life insurance policy for uh, its employees. Um, so it ends up, well, last year was $882.95. So I budgeted a thousand because we do have a couple of new employees. And so it's a thousand dollars. Any questions on life insurance? No. Okay, very good. Unemployment insurance. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a, a crapshoot, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, 
we've been budgeting right now. I have no unemployment claims that we're paying out. Um, everyone seems back seems to be back to work during COVID. We did have quite a few um, unemployment claims. Um, I, you know, I would probably still it's sixteen thousand. I think that I for some reason I don't have that sheet. Is it? Um, I, you might, because I haven't had any in a while, you might be able to drop that to maybe 10,000 just to make sure that we do cover. Um, I, I forgot all about, you know, checking on my uh, claims since I did the budget. I still had claims at the time that I was doing the budget, but they have gone away now, so. Ready, there's a question. So, we're just, so the town is it, the town is self-insured in terms of unemployment insurance. So yeah. we don't we don't have a policy or anything. Whatever claims come in, we have to pay. Yeah. Well, whatever yeah. valid claims come in, we have to pay. Our part. <laughs> okay. Um, Franklin County Retirement Board. Four point four point five seven percent. I don't know, Brian. Did you want to take that one or me? Um, that's just a figure that's set by the Franklin Regional Retirement System based on our payroll and our, oh gosh, I can't think of the word, um, actuary, <laughs> that's the word, um, with the uh, county. So uh, it's kind of a... So we get the bill on this. Yeah, bill. pretty much. Yeah. All righty. Any questions on Franklin County Retirement Board assessment? No. All right. Finally, we have, well, maybe not. No. So this is police and fire IOD. This is injured on duty insurance. Yep. So um, police and firemen are covered under workman's comp under Massachusetts general They're laws. Not. They're not. Okay. But nobody wanted to insure them because you hurt most often. Right. Um, so they separated them and we have a separate, what's called an IOD or injured on duty policy, Maya. Um, and again, um, we have had claims on this policy within the past couple of years, so that's going to drive up and increase some premiums. Um, so again, they recommended a, uh, somewhere about six to seven percent increase. I did the calculation of the five five percent. That should be fine. Okay. Good okay. job. Any questions on the police fire injury? Nope. Okay. Oh, Pep. Um, we keep plugging away at our actuarial um, amount. Um, right now, I think we have two, I, I forgot to look that up before I left, but 250 <laughs> or 275, I can't remember which, um, falls in, in our, our OPEB fund. Um, and we're just, you know, I ask that we keep adding, you know, twenty five thousand dollars. I didn't put it in the um, the budget itself. I don't think. Did you put? I don't know why mine says twenty. It doesn't say anything for twenty twenty three. So, I guess that might have been a. I wanted to have a discussion <laughs> on that, but um, I would recommend a twenty five thousand dollar. That's what's here. That's what's yeah. Here. yeah. Okay. Mine, I, I don't know what happened to mine, but. We talked about it after that. Okay. So. Okay. Um, first of all, are there any questions in the OPEB liability fund? Yes, I, I guess I have a question just to make sure I'm understanding okay. properly. Donna? This is, this is like a contingency for all the other benefits. Is that what this is? It's. Other post employment benefits. It's actually to pay the insurance and things of those retirees that we have. Right now, we're continuing to pay people with the health insurance operating budget. But in the future, once this um, pot of money gets built up, we'll be using that to cover those um, retired folks instead and because you can you hold those retirees until until they pass away so you're paying their retired retired health insurance until that time 
we pay the same percentage for retired employees as current employees? No, um, retirees are fifty percent, and um, uh, regular employees are seventy-five percent for the HMO and seventy percent for a PPO. Um, how how is that fund? Is that is this fund? Um, adequate or not? Well, we're, our actuarial requirement is close to $900,000. And we have 200 and some odd thousand dollars in there right now, so. Okay. so that answers that question. Yes, right. we're just building it. <laughs> That's why we're trying to build it with that. As long as we aren't, our regular health insurance budget is not overwhelming and because it, the premiums have kept stayed low for our health insurance policy over the years, it made more sense to pay those retirees out of that and build up the OPEB account so that in the future when that health insurance line item may not, we may not be able to absorb as much of a hit in that line, we would have the OPEB fund to cover those. And OPEB can only be used for those benefits. It cannot be transferred into anything else. Um, so. And this is no different than about 350 other towns and cities in Massachusetts. So Waitley's not right. an outlier here. Actually, surprisingly, we're, we might be more ahead of the game than some other towns. Yeah, because we, we've started the process of chipping away. Yeah. And I have the money with an investment firm that it makes some pretty even, well, not right now so much, but it's doing quite well on the investment side. Hopefully they bought oil stocks. <laughs> okay. Um, Next one, Division of Medicaid Assistance. Donna, I'm, I'm sorry, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yes, okay, yes. Good. Um, okay, Division of Medicaid Assistance. What is this? This is a school um, associated fund. I, to tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure how it works. Um, the, Brian, do you have? Well, we pay a portion of uh, the Medicaid costs for special ed services that are provided to out of district placements. Um, so we pay a, a small percentage of those costs. So who is this paid to? It usually comes from the Pioneer Valley Lower, the Lower Pioneer Valley Cooperative. They manage it. Pioneer. Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative. Collaborative, yeah. So they provide services to, to special needs students. Okay. And we pay a, a small percentage of that. I mean, it's not a, it's not a lot of money, but it's just. Um, yeah. We also get some of it reimbursed from the state. So. We get some of it reimbursed. Or? Some of it, not not the whole thing, but we do get some of it reimbursed. Right, so you see this fluctuating, it's based on the, the yep. services provided. Right. Righty. Is that it? Um, yep. Yeah. I had a couple of other line items in my treasurer's budget. I didn't know if you wanted to discuss those. They aren't drastic. It's my Harper's payroll account. That's just to process payroll. Um, and that went up a hundred dollars and that's mainly for the, um, the ACA reporting. Um, and then my tax taking account is at $10,000 and remaining stable. And we get that money, any charges that get applied to that tax taking account. Once that tax taking is paid off, that money comes back to the town. Any others, Lynn? Um, I, I think Brian will probably discuss debt, so I 
don't have to do that one. Okay. That and that's fine. about it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Appreciate I think that's it, it for me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye. All right. All right. Um, that was insurance benefits. Did you want to discuss debt now? Uh, if we want to, sure. Why not? Why not? Which bill is that? Let me find it. I think it's section nine. Yes. Right? Oh yeah, section nine. So this is this is just looking at general fund back debt. So debt that we typically support with the tax levy. Yeah. So it's not talking about enterprise fund debt nor CTA debt, which are hopefully after the special town meeting no longer exist because it'll be paid off. So no long-term debt, uh, short-term debt. There's those two items, the wood chipper and the uh, the excavator that there are lease purchase agreements with. Um, so those are the amounts. <coughs> That will be the payments for mm -hmm. uh, 2023. Okay. Um, and that'll be it, right? No, there's, uh, no. it was a five-year lease purchase. Oh, okay. yep. um, so debt does not need to be paid with the tax levy. It can be paid with existing funds or, or any other way, right? It's mm -hmm. similar to any other expense. Um, but um, typically we've listed it um, as part of the operating budget. Okay. Any questions about debt, Brian? Before we uh, close that. All right, thank you. Sir. Thank you. Um, okay, um, let's circle back here, and um, I believe Recreation Commission. Yes, sir. Um, never met. I'm Paul Antea. Guys, how about we introduce ourselves? Jim Perkinella. Yeah. Jim Kennedy. Yeah. Fred Benner. Trev. And then, sorry, what was your name? And you are? Chris Woods. Chris Wood. Yep. Williams. 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 And Brenda is on the promote. Brenda is, is on the um, Brenda's one of those black screens at the top. And Chris, I'm here as well. Just up there. Yeah. Um, now, are you the recreation director? Uh, I'm the chairman of the rec commission. Ch chairman. Okay. Yep. Well, thanks. For doing this, yeah. uh, and uh, I just got a new budget in, and I moved it around, and I don't know if I can find it. So this is a uh, paper shop. Yeah. Uh, what? It, it will. It will be in the budget updates. It will be in the budget yeah, updates because right. one of the four. Oh, okay. Okay. CR. CRS two. CRS two. Okay. okay. Looked at it and sorted it. And yeah, rather than make you wait for me to try to find it, I'm going to just kind of move me over here. Go. And uh, thank you, Brian. Yeah. Okay, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the department? It looks like. Uh, you got one increase of $1,000 for the field, uh, a total of 14.11% increase. Um, want to tell us a little bit about the rec commission and, and how things are going and, and are there plans for the future, expansion, help kids out, tell us kind of what's going on. Yeah, um, so the rec commission has been doing great. Um, this year we have uh, 149 registrations through three sports. Um, which has been spectacular. Um, we will be um, moving forward and adding an additional registration um, for a new, new uh, baseball season this summer. So that's kind of uh, something we're doing on the up. Um, soccer season was great. Uh, total success with that. Got some new equipment there. Uh, so all of our that's another thing that's been going quite well, um, being able to, to get new equipment for these teams. Now that we're getting some extra kids back in, um, kind of getting reorganized post COVID. Um, so, so that was really great getting kids top-notch stuff. Um, 
We've had some excellent volunteer parents helping out coaching, um, which has also been been something that that we've appreciated um, having that volunteer work. That's really what makes it work around here. Um, you know, when it comes to that that increase over at Hurley, uh, we have added the softball field yeah. a couple of years ago. So that's something that we are anticipating. Um, you know, potentially costing our costing us some additional money. So mm -hmm. that's how how we were thinking for uh, for Hurley. He also with that additional summer summer season, the bathrooms are going to be a little busier in the summertime. So we're going to have BKM solutions coming twice a week. Yeah. Um, so that'll that'll bump up bump up that cost over there at Hurley. Um, one really exciting thing that we did this fall was we uh we cut out the infields at both fields and we got a big order of uh big order of dirt basically <laughs> um I don't know if see see it, dump, yeah, yeah. yeah dumped out there uh, our, our boy wayne is gonna it's gonna be spreading that out for us um so yeah we got that coming in i anticipate having to get some more um for the big diamond and then probably putting the rest to uh work on rebuilding the mound over on the little league field yeah. Uh, so a lot of a lot of work going over there. We got a scoreboard, so uh, we'll be getting that put in coming up. Uh, hopefully, get some little type of decoration around there, make it look mm -hmm. nice. So, so yeah, early heat, early heat's going great. Yeah. Um, gonna gonna keep that place looking sharp. That's sure. game plan. Yeah. No, it's a great facility. It looks great. I, I I think it's the envy of most towns around here. And Jonathan uh, had a lot to do with putting that softball diamond in down Absolutely. back and uh, um, I look, look forward to seeing kids playing on that. Um, that's great. Do you, and, and we should be getting the driveway repaid soon. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Upgrades on the, the building too. Yeah, so that's something we're, we're very, very excited about getting that bathroom updated for hand, um, you know, for a handicap bathroom and then uh, having that parking lot looking sharp, that's going to be, that's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a batting cage behind the pavilion um, that's kind of on its last life. So we're thinking um, probably getting a, getting a net for that kind of re, you know, so that we have that mm -hmm. at least for the summertime. And then once we up that building and, um, you know, get the pavement in there, I guess we'll have to sort of, sort of think about what we'll do moving forward there because I feel like we'll have to move it yeah. probably so yeah. well look everybody wants more, more money and would like more money uh, sure. uh do you think that that the commission could use more or will need more in the very near future which would uh, you know I based on um what we were able to do in the last year, I do think these slight increases, um, you know, going up a thousand for, uh, you know, for the fields at early, and then going up for the sports equipment uh, replacement, I do think that's going to be satisfactory for us um, for taking care of what we need to do. You know, at this point, uh, our revolving account is strong. Again, we're getting um, a lot of registrations, and we're looking forward to, you know. Potentially, a, you know, 15, 20 percent increase in registrations with the summer teams we're going to have going. Um, so, so that's going to be helping us out too. So, I don't anticipate uh, a need for it uh, for a large, large bump in our budget forward. Based on these, you know, what I'm looking at here. Have you discussed user fees at all? Whether there's a whether it's warranted to, to raise user fees based on the improvements that we're making? Yes. So, um, yeah, that was something the Red Commission uh, discussed. And our reason for upping registration fees was we got a uh, recreation software this fall, which has been absolutely fantastic. It's called RecDesk. Uh, that was something. Um, Oh, so that is something that could potentially be something. But anyway, so something that, that that's been doing great um, is just such easy registrations. I was with uh, was with one of my friends the other day. We were getting tuxes for his brother's wedding, 
And I said, hey, to sign up, sign up the kids for youth baseball. And he's like, no, nah, I didn't get to it today. And I was like, well, it's like, hey, show off for the other guys. <laughs> Bust out your cell phone, do it right now. Really? Three, three clicks, the guy's okay. got him signed up and he's ready to go. And That's just great. the feedback from families is mm -hmm. unreal. It is so easy to get these people signed up. I had two players, two, two families reach out last week for their, uh, for their children about like, hey, you know, baseball registration has been closed. What can we do about this? And I went online, clicked, changed the program, made a little click, and then bam, they're on there. And it's just like, hey, this is updated. You're wow. free to go. Wow. And just bam. No, no issue. When you have the schedules, we have, you know, I have this huge flex calendar that has absolutely everything going on between the adult leagues, you know, suburban basketball when they were using the Waitley gym as well, rec basketball, um, you know, ski club, cross country soccer, all there on this schedule. Um, I mean, it, it is parents can go right online, look up their kids game schedule, the practice schedule. Wow. So it's, it's been spectacular. Oh, um, that's a big upgrade. Yeah. And that's significant. It's, it's been huge. How was it paid? Who paid for the software? So this, this, I believe came out of our revolving account. This came out of this summertime when we voted on it. It, it came out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it's revolving account. So that is something that I suppose we would not want to consistently rely on our revolving account to pay for something that we're, you know, using. yeah, it's infrastructure actually. And, and yeah. probably something you should try to build into your budget. Okay. One of the things that I missed the rec committee meeting recently, but one of the things that I was going to bring up is we get such great revenue from the adult baseball leagues. There are two of them. And, and, I think that they would probably not bat an eye if we increase that by ten dollars a day. Yeah. So if you know Chris, and again we can talk about this offline, but but you let's say the over fifty, the real old guy baseball, um, you know if 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 they they probably use the field depending upon rain fifteen times a year, it's not a tremendous amount of money going up by ten, but it's something. And then the over thirty. Would, would be a similar bump. So it, it, it's something to consider just so we have a little bit more revenue for, for, the, for the maintenance upgrades and paying for, for dirt and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely, absolutely. So I got a, who, who organizes, runs, builds the whole uh, skating rink? Uh, is, is, that the, um, is that the fire department or is, <coughs> who does that? I think it's fire. It's fire? So that doesn't come under the rec commission at all? Um, it doesn't come out of our budget, no. But I know both John and Wayne Hakotsky had a, had a huge role in that. That was something where I, I stepped back and they, they really stepped up um, to make that happen, for sure. But that did not come out of our, our budget, no. <laughs> that was a neat thing. Mm -hmm. But I will say with those summer leagues John was talking about, like John, I like, those guys reached out and it's just like, okay, we got this day, this day, this day, we have summer soccer over here. So I just have this calendar just that I'm ready to prepare in March for what's going on all summer with this software that we're using. I mean, it is, it's awesome. It really is super helpful. Okay. Any chance we could get that to the fire department? facetious. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all. laughs> Okay, um, any questions before we wrap up? Any, any comments or requests that you'd like to make, Chris, before? I, I think I'm all set. Um, okay. You guys opened the floor to me for a little bit, so that was that was awesome, a lot of fun talking about this. Sounds good. Yes, Thank you. Really good. Thank you for coming in. Okay, thank nice. you. All right, take all right. care, everyone. Thank See you. Much. It's it's in here. I didn't push put these in here yet. Let's go. Okay, we're on. Um, review and discuss recommendations of the personnel committee. This is not a vote. This is just. I, I, I wanted to make sure that we got these. Yes. Coming now. Any time.
packet and I, these went out on Friday. Okay. Um, the packet. The packet. So one right on top of this is come off. Got it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So I just want to pass Just wanted to pass this along. Um, I'll just read the ones that that are recommended. Um, if we have questions, if you want, um, the folks who these um, pertain to, if we want to talk with them, I can try to arrange that. Um, First one is town clerk requests an hours um, from 22 to 28 hours. Um, that was one recommendation that the, that the personnel committee uh, recommends. Um, so again, this town clerk would be compensated for 28 instead of the 22 hours that they currently are compensated for. Brian, yeah. are these reflected in the budgets? They are not. So and that, Paul and I were talking about that before. So once we vote on these, then I'll include them in the, in the budgets, but I, I do give a uh, sort of a financial impact on the table at the end here, so that those would be, um, so we have a sense overall of what they would cost. Mm -hmm. Everybody, uh, go through the model, I don't know if I want to. Um, and I may not have the answers for these, but I can ask them. Why don't you they, just go through them and then we'll come back and people can pick what questions they yeah. want from, let's get through a little bit. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so this is on the top of page two for highway department wage rate increases. Um, it was proposed and recommended by the personnel committee. Um, Part-time operator be increased from $16 to $22 per hour. One to three year operator laborer, uh, $20.95 to $22.50. You see my note here, we don't have anybody higher than at this level. Um, the next one is uh, three plus year operator laborer from 2165 to 2325. Um, and we currently have two employees at that rate, at that position. Um, and, and I'll just back up for one second. So how I organized this memo was the personnel committee will accept wage requests or position changes. So you see the title up there on the top of page one. Um, then you see on the middle of page two, it says annual salary survey and review. That's yep. based on the on the recommendations that were generated from the uh, the ten town comparable uh, salary survey. Mm -hmm. So for this number six, um, the personnel committee noted that so the police chief salary is three point eight percent lower than the median. So the select board has agreed to increase the salary to the comparable median for the police chief. So the, the annual salary survey showed that it was low compared to those towns, and they um, agreed to increase it. Um, one thing that we just want to note, and I want the, the finance committee to be aware of this, um, the fire chief will reach mandatory retirement age um, in the summer of 2023. Um, and we talked about this very briefly at this at the last select board meeting, and we want to have some discussions about the future of the fire department um, in terms of you know whether they continue with a part-time chief, whether there's a uh, more than part-time chief, whether there's a full-time chief, whether um, there's some type of organization or regional organization that makes, you know, more sense for the future. Really, I think all options are on the table and the time to do it is typically when we have retirements. Yeah. Um, so the selectors are going to those conversations and it seems like a long ways away, but it's really not because if you think it's, it's going to be FY24, right? Sure. And we're going to start planning for FY24 in like yeah. 10 months. Right. Um, and that's, that's, that's not a lot of time. Time to go. Um, but I want everybody to keep in the back of their minds that there is this change coming. I know I said I'd wait to the end, but I gotta yeah. ask you now. When we say the median, what is I mean I know what the median is, but what what was the um, what, you know what was the range here? What was the what 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 towns? What uh so I give you that survey? I mean, maybe it did. Maybe you just talk us through it. You know, I just want to see if I provided it or not. If I didn't, I will. So this is a survey that the that the personnel committee has been using for 
Five years now, four years now. Tommy is uh, on the personnel committee. He's in yeah. Florida. He's unable to make this meeting. So yeah. Um, and they compare for the for these ten towns that, that that they identified four or five years ago, based on it was population, geography, um, percent commercial, industrial land. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a bunch of things. Okay, so um, it's those ten towns. Yeah, okay. because they wanted to establish some consistency. Because what was happening was the town would do a a would hire um, UMass boss Collins Center right to do a study one year, and then a couple years later, it would be somebody else, and there'd be all these different towns, right. and depending on which towns you select, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, right? Um, so they wanted to establish some consistency in, what, in who they were um, comparing themselves to. Okay. Um, I don't have a copy of it on this computer, um, but I can make sure that that gets sent back out, um, sent out as to what the towns are. Um, I should try to name them, but I won't get all of them. But they're all around. I was going to do the size. You can what? All right, let's go. Ready? 10 town challenge. Stale, Stanton, Hatfield, Pelham, Conway, said Hatfield. Ashfield. Oh, Ashfield, yeah. Shootsbury. Shootsbury. Williamsburg. Just, just, yes. 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 Williamsburg. Um, but I'll make sure that, that okay. you guys have that most recent one. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Yep. Eight. Uh, number eight is on page two. Personnel committee recommends that the part time police officer wage rate be increased from 1960 to 2050 an hour. Um, and then number nine, um, in an effort to account for additional responsibilities, the personnel committee unanimously recommends one abstention that the highway building superintendent salary be raised to an amount equal to 8% over the median salary of the highway superintendents from the 10 comparable towns. The rationale for this was that um, most, all if not most of the uh, comparisons for uh, the highway superintendent salary, well, we have a highway building superintendent now because they were given additional responsibilities. Three years ago, along yeah. with the bump, if we were to keep comparing um, the highway superintendent salary to highway superintendents, then then eventually what we pay the highway superintendent over a period of years is going to shrink and there's going to be this essentially going to be the value to that was their reason. Um, okay. And then the last one was the COLA. Um, personnel committee recommends a 3.75% cost of living adjustment um, for employees on a four to one vote. And I give you the calculation here based on FY22 salaries. I would be an additional uh, almost $31,000. And then I list the summary of the financial impacts of the recommendations that if all of these were adopted, it would be an additional $52,565. In addition to that, uh, the budget that's shown on that budget projection spreadsheet, the one that's 11 by 17. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that would give us an idea as to sort of what total, um, total budget would be. Yeah. It would also give us uh, a sense of uh, the tax rate. All right. Questions? Floor is open. Um, I, I have a question just about the usual procedure. Uh, with, with this kind of recommendation, does the committee um, typically take a line by line review? Six recommendations here yeah. with each one and does the committee sometimes say we'll support some of this but not or is it more of a yes or no it has been both okay, okay. Um, sorry i have not watched the films of your previous meetings I, 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 through the years it has been it has been a yes and no depending on finances depending upon what to the best of our ability to be able to Project what a tax increase might be for 
um, local town. Um, so that's that's going to have some bearing on all of this. One of the things that I think we truly need to do is um, I think we need to take a look at our total salaries and the total salary expenditures, uh, what this is projected to be, and we move back, we can move back five years because we've spent it and we know what it is. And let's take a look at the rate of rise of uh, salaries within town um, and just get a sense of it. Um, look, we have good, good employees and the towns run well. Um, and um, but we also have to balance out the fact that um, many people, you know, um, are on fixed incomes. Many people are, uh, especially in this day and age with uh, you know, inflation and whatnot at this time. Um, so I think that's a consideration that we need to look at. And I mean, there's no vote tonight, but um, as we get closer to the vote, I, I, I think that's one of the, um, you know, one of the pieces of information that we're going to want to take a look at um, moving forward. Here. We could reach out to, to Dara. To who? Dara, the account. Yeah. And yeah. ask her to pull a report. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. she can do that. Yeah, she can. Yeah. Yeah. From, what do you want to go back to? Yeah. Well, I, I just, 2023, let's go back to uh, 18. And also, with that, she should indicate number of employees. So obviously, that has an impact. Oh, we had fun with that earlier this year. Yeah, I know. Um, like FTEs, right? Full time employees. Yeah, full time. Not like, no. right. <laughs> not like the 216 employees that yeah. some websites are saying. Yeah. Hey, hey Brian. Yeah. I'm sorry if I missed it, but was part of the personnel committee's recommendation, did that include a few hours for um, a rec committee uh, hire? No, they haven't talked about that yet. They have not talked about it yet. Okay, fine. Thank you. What did I see on here for the record? So there, so there are two outstanding proposals that, that the personnel committee has not made a recommendation on. One of, is a traffic control officer, yeah. which is essentially a, a non-uniformed um, traffic officer. I Similar to a flagger, I guess, um, but it, that really doesn't have financial implications yeah. on the operating budget because that's paid for by the if it were to pass, it would be paid for by the, mm -hmm. the contract that's requesting the detail. The other one is a uh, proposal to create a, a paid position within uh, the rec commission. Yeah. Uh, and that was talked about at the per first personnel committee, mm -hmm. but nothing was really, there was really no information other than just, hey, here's this idea. Jonathan, um, is that what you were alluding to? Yes. The, essentially, the concept is that, you know, we all know that, that, that REC is very well run. Um, it's also the, other than the schools, it's, it's the thing that touches most people most closely uh, in town in terms of interface. And the amount of time that, and having been in that position for many, many years, obviously, um, the amount of time that it takes is exorbitant so the concept is that we could do that much more and get an even higher return on our investment um, if someone were dedicated in terms of time to to give back to the community um, i think the number that was being discussed was was five hours a week so it's a very small number um, but you know i i think rec chairs and i know i put in at least 10 to 15 hours a week when i was rec chair um, and and they're not even asking for that much, uh, but to keep it really running, and, and it's very hard to get volunteers to spend that kind of time. Um, that's the concept. Yeah. Who would this person report to? Uh, probably, probably report into into Brian. Um, well, the I mean, the commission obviously the rec committee. Yeah. Would, have to be first, yeah. would be part of that as well. The rec committee would hire that person. Um, the committee would then have a chair 
and then the chair would have to be someone different from the five hour week employee that that would be my estimation based upon just good checks and balances gotcha. yeah no it's a lot of time it's a lot of time to ask someone to give freely of themselves and, and there's incredible burnout there you know i know i experienced it i know the fred warren experienced it. i know patty pierog experienced it the burnout is 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 incredible because as we all know interface with parents is exhausting and that's not a bad thing it's just it's 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 a lot of time yeah no just from my own experience from my own kids and when i was involved with the rec department back in well okay 80s 90s um and i look at it today with, with my grandchildren there um it's a remarkable um improvement it's a remarkable service that we have for the children of this town so uh I think we're all in the back of that. Yeah. And and by the way, it's a, it's a recruitment vehicle for new people to come into town. Sure. Yeah. That, that too is true. Absolutely. Okay. Just wanted um, to throw that out. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, are we good with the personnel? If, um, we're going to discuss that again. Yeah. Right. So th this is like the first go, this is the pass, first pass on the personnel issues stuff that's in front of us the uh the increases and whatnot something to digest for another meeting um and maybe we'll have a little more information to be able to make a, um you know a better decision at that point um are the uh, excuse me the personnel committee going to have the answers to these things they're discussing this year or is that next year or those what? two pieces um what do they plan on uh, So the traffic control officer one won't impact the budget at all. Uh, so I don't I don't know that the finance committee needs to vote on that. Um, Another person definitely the, the recreation director coordinator position. Yes, they'll have a decision probably I think the next time that they will all the next time we probably have an answer on that. Sometime early April. So it'll be before we uh, before we take a final vote. Um, would now be a good time to discuss the personnel committee itself. Sure. Okay. Um, it was recently brought to my attention that neighboring towns of ours have personnel committees that do not mirror our own. Um, so I decided to reach out. I called um, town administrators in each town and ask them how their personnel committee was comprised. Um, what I've provided for everybody is a copy from the town of Deerfield and a copy from the town of Conway. In both of those towns, it is, uh, it is law in the town that um, <coughs> individuals who comprise this committee cannot be an elected official nor an employee in order to serve on the personnel committee. Um, and I think we should discuss this as a group and see what people think. And, um, and after that, make a recommendation to the select board um, from the finance committee in regards to this of things. I, I, I have to say that this does not come from any issue that we have, nor does it come from um, anyone on our own committee who has not done the job and done the job well, you know, at any point. Um, but what we always strive for is transparency and um, we certainly don't want to be put in a position where it could be thought of as a conflict of interest. Any kind of recommendation, because we take the personnel committee recommendation and then we move forward with it. And 
the people of the town have to know that there is no chance of there being a conflict of interest. And uh, so I'm going to throw it out. And what do you think? Brenda, are you there? Um, she's on there twice. Yeah, I think she tried to call in the first time. She couldn't get herself off of you. So she, yeah, she was having trouble some time ago. But she is moving. So there's perception and there's reality. Exactly. And the perception is what I too am concerned about. Right. I don't, in reality, I don't, I know there's some kind of issues and problems. Right. It's the perception, mm -hmm. potential conflict of interest with employees being on that committee. Right. Um, and I also asked both Deerfield and Conway about people who serve on the committee who are related to those individuals on that they don't allow to be on that committee and they said that would not happen either so they're very concerned about that whole um you know that whole look um now town of sunderland is exactly like us okay they have a finance committee person they have an employee representative, they have a select board member, um, and they have one or two other um, just um, individuals from town. Um, I can tell you Hatfield has nothing. Um, they, they had a personnel committee and um, disbanded and now the select board does all the personnel stuff. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at with this. Um, and I think it's important because as we look at how salary, compensation, benefits move, um, I think the town has to know that there is no conflict of interest in that process. Um, so, thoughts? The, the one suggestion that I would, I would encourage people to think about where it relates to Deerfield. And I'm not sure Deerfield is a fair comparison because they do have collective bargaining. So their employees are absolutely at the table because of the collective bargaining. So I'm not sure that, I think that's an apples and oranges comparison. I'm just uh, going by what statute says. I, I get that. I, I, I totally get that. But um, any town that has collective bargaining absolutely has employees as part of that negotiation and that decision-making process. Um, I, I think having different perspectives is important. I, I hear you when you say uh, perception versus reality, but you know, we've had finance committee people who have had family members employed by the schools. Um, and, and I didn't think that was a conflict of interest, but some could. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just, and I guess we still do. I, I wasn't even thinking pr pr presently. I was just thinking historically. We are such a small town. Yep. But it's very difficult to avoid the potential for perception. What we can do is make sure that it is, it is completely transparent. And so that people who do have some relationship, regardless of what it is, and I really don't think there's an issue here. Um, because I respect everyone who's on all these committees tremendously. But as long as there's transparency and as long as people understand the relationships that may or may not exist now or in the future, I think that's what we have to strive for because in a 1,450 person town, there's no way to avoid this unless you want to change our, our form of government. Yep. Um, I think the most important thing here is that this issue is in the open that is discussed and that at this point in time that we um, all understand it and um, just come to an agreement that we're comfortable with um, and that comfort may be to just keep things as they are because you're absolutely right if 1400 people in town 
how often can you rotate these com these committees? Um, I mean, we can hardly get enough people to do it now. Um, so, um, but that is, um, you know, conflict. It's just it, it's just a little bit uncomfortable when you think that people are voting their own salary increases. That's the that's the discomfort, and. I don't know how to get around that, um, to be honest. Donna? Um, the fact that town employees have served on the town's personnel committee has surprised me when I first noticed it. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do with Pete, who I admire tremendously. Um, I, my experience is more with large, complex nonprofit organizations, mostly in higher education. Um, where you, you would just never, you know, you would never have that. You would have people at the table and, and have a genuine conversation, mm -hmm. you know, but when it came to voting, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have people voting, as you say, on their own salaries. I, I think um, I can say this because I don't actually remember who else is on the personnel committee right now, so don't, don't tell me, but um, I would be concerned, and maybe this is a separate concern, given the range of kinds of jobs that we have in this little town that we really try to have at least one committee member who has had supervisory responsibility at a complex organization where you have to deal with the dining service employee and the legal staff and the fact, you know, just multiple kinds of positions because I think that's a special set of skills. Um, sure. And maybe Brian brings us that. I don't, I don't mean that he does, but you, that you don't. Um, I, one, one thing I think has to be considered with the personnel committee that as far as conflicts and Keith's situation is interesting, is that it has ultimately no real authority. It's an advisory, sure. rec it makes recommendations. No it does not set wages. Mm -hmm. uh, it can recommend to set wages, but it actually doesn't. Right, it does not set, it doesn't, it's not set in stone. Um, but as the finance committee to take the information from the personnel com committee. Well, I think that that's where the open, I mean, as long as there is transparency of right. who it is, then the finance committee and the select board yeah. can take into account mm -hmm. what may be perceived as biases of whatever sort. Of some sort. But this, mm -hmm. The, the two groups that do make some sort of decisions based on that are just need to be aware of what is coming out in the yeah. finance committee. Right. Yeah. Uh, personnel, I'm sorry. Personnel. Um, anyone have any, Brian, do you have any thoughts? Well, because you're in your. I, I, I've got one question for Brian. When were, was the personnel committee established? You know, no, that, I would <laughs> love to know what the rationale was that it was at the time for putting it. I'm yeah. not saying the reasoning was valid or invalid. I just would like to know what the reasoning was at the time. John, the maybe Jonathan would have some knowledge of that. The personnel committee has existed since I've been on the board eight, for 18 years. Um, and the makeup has always been consistent. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna throw out one thought that I have, and I, it's been festering for quite a while. And that is, this may be an opportunity for the town because it has been a long time since we have taken a look at how committees are formed in town. Keeping in mind that, as we all know, finding the volunteers is a struggle at best. That we shouldn't just look at the comp that how the personnel committee is is comprised and how it's comprised, but we should look at how each committee in town is comprised and to really take a long hard look as, as to whether the, the mechanism for putting together personnel, planning, um, uh, CPC, although that's by legislation, um, finance, uh, you know, all the different committees, how are they put together and really go through a long list, go through a long process of 
is this a 21st century way to put together this committee or is it a way to that, that has maybe seen its seen its day in a, in a better light so okay. I yes. again rather than picking on personnel because i'm not sure it's fair just to pick on one committee because they all impact the budget obviously in different ways that we have a group put together that takes a look at how all communities are comprised, how, how it's comprised and what their makeup is currently and what perhaps it should be and report back to town meetings say in, in the spring of 2023, when we really take an exhaustive look, not just to what other towns do next, next door because they, maybe they don't do it right either. But what makes sense from a 21st century perspective? That that would be my suggestion. But again, I, I don't get a vote starting in July, so you know I'm just I'm just saying it with 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 an ability to 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 take my muffle off. That's what I would suggest we do. But, but in line with that, I think we also need to keep in mind what was mentioned before that we are a 1,500 person community yeah. and we don't necessarily have the biggest pool of people who would be interested in filling these jobs either. And it sounded like that's what happened at Hatfield when I spoke to the town administrator there. They said that they had a personnel committee um, and it was uh, was appointed by the select board and then it just people didn't show. And then the select board had to take on um, all the responsibilities of the personnel committee. So. Um, so yeah, but you know, I, I think the important thing is that you know we discuss it and it's out in the open and and um, we let the townspeople know because it's been brought to my attention more than once the makeup of that committee and the fact that they in fact vote their own salaries. In. So is that okay? It's it's um, yes, that's how it's been. I I don't think it's ever been a problem, but yes, that is the way it is and. We need to discuss it. And so now the town knows that the finance committee has discussed it um, as well as with the select board and that um, we are aware of it and um, move, we will move on. And But I think Jonathan's um, point about examining all the committees in town and how they are constructed and um, how they communicate will be quite a task and uh well and, and the problem is that we're going to put together a committee to study the committees and that committee will be comprised of people who are already on those committees well, right but but i mean it, the 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 and, and and i don't think anyone wants to go through this exercise but the alternative would be to go through a charter commission uh discussion and that would be exhausting so i guess to keep this moving forward um, Brian, I'm going to ask you, and I'll use my prerogative as the select board chair. Can we put this on the select board agenda um, for a, at least a discussion of creating a working group um, to, to look at whether we want to put together a working group to look at construction and co composition of all committees in town? And then we can table it or we can say great idea, but but it should be discussed in a, in a select board meeting um, on an agenda. Sure. You have the same people design a highway garage too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you guys, what else can I, they do? I, and with that, you guys, I have to fond a bid adieu. Have a great night, everybody. Brian, they can I have a good night. Think of the future of the fire department. Though. And the fire department. <laughs> can we just have one big committee that's just going to. One committee. Just, sure. just take over. Just yeah. <laughs> they all report to you. We call it the future committee. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's that discussion. Thank you. Does anyone, would anyone like to say anything concerning the last topic on the personnel committee or committees in general? Um, I guess I would. I, I was struck by the Recreation Commission's request for paid assistance um, because one of the things that uh, astonished me 12 years ago when I moved here <laughs> and has continued to astonish me is how many committees work, do pretty serious work with no staff support. Right. Um, 
I mean, our planning board had no staff support until one year ago. Our zoning board of appeals has no staff support. Um, I, I mean, I could, I won't bore you with the whole list. And I don't think those members would complain about that. But it seems to me that part of looking at committee work and responsibility should be just stepping back and thinking, does this make sense? And can a board of, well, actually a board of assessors does have paid staff, so yeah. it's not a good example. Um, you see what I mean? Sure. Just the balance yeah. of the work. Mm -hmm. And I, I am certainly not one advocating for adding a lot of town employees. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we just have to look at it all together. Yeah, and I, I, yeah. I think it's important for us to look at total salaries <clears throat> and how this what the salary progression has been over, over time. And I think that should have a bearing as to how we approach any kind of recommendation that we have regarding sal salary increases. So I think the, the recommendations we're getting are well reviewed with what committees we have in town now. That's a board of selectors. Yeah. And then yeah. we present it to the people. Right. Yeah. I, I, but I also think that, you know, while we have to look at the finances and salaries as a whole, we also have to look at the benefits to the town. We hired someone last year to be support for the planning and to work on grants. And yeah. that position has worked out wonderfully. Yeah. Sure. So um, while it's an increase in salary, I think it's overall been a tremendous benefit to the town. Yeah. So yeah, and I I I I I just don't know. And I don't think any of us know what the appetite is in this town um in regards to tax increases. I mean, I I I just I don't know. I, I I wouldn't know, um, and I don't know how you would discover that. But um, at, at some point in time, and I don't think we're there, but at some point in time, um, as you add, every time you add a salary increase, every time you add a new salary, it doesn't go away. Pretty it quick. stays there, yeah. right? Pretty quick, we'll be paying for everything in town that we're going to go broke. The other thing is the good thing about Hannah Davis's job, I think, is that it has been conceived and um, you know, it's a full time job. But Crabble was saying we're going to have five hours here and six hours here and 12 hours here. Is that two years later, those numbers have all started to creep up? Exactly. And you have people only know about one of them. <laughs> you know, they're, they have blinders on yep. and they're not. And the town is this small, it has to have generalists, I think. Um, yeah. Brian, tell me if you disagree. <laughs> no, I'm not the biggest journalist here. You know, so. you something, somebody <laughs> says, what do we need to do? <laughs> Once it's in the budget, it rarely comes out. Oh. And so that's a rare, rare that's a rarity. Um, I'd just like to, uh, are we good on, on this discussion? Are you good? Do you have anything more for us? Um, I just want, well, I just wanted to show you quickly show go over that chart. Okay. Are you mean on this or like tonight? Oh, well, for both. <laughs> for tonight, I just wanted to make one statement about the schools, um, the discussion that we had, and I want to run it by um, everybody here. So I, let me let me just do that. And while you're, yeah. um, you know, last week we had a meeting with. Um, both the Frontier Regional High School as well as Wheatley Elementary School. And it was their meeting that we attended. Um, Brian, over time, had um, there was some reluctance for them to attend our meeting. And, um, and I, th I I think there were there were a few emotions that went back and forth during the meeting last week, which is unfortunate, but it happened, and um, and everybody's on the same team. They all want the same thing. They all we all want what's best for the kids uh, in town. 
But when I think about where this has gone over time, and Brian runs around trying to schedule the superintendent of schools and the business, business manager and trying to work in the school committee and trying to work it all in. And that's not what we should be um, because they don't report to us. They, they report the superintendent. Now, I've, gone, I've been with six different superintendents and I can tell you, there have been some, some good ones, some not so good ones. The one we have now is a good one. Okay, and, um, and I get his frustration about having to go to five meetings and do the same thing at each meeting and why they had a, so they had their own public uh, budget meeting, which wasn't good. It just wasn't, wasn't good. But that aside, um, he doesn't report to us. He reports to the school committees. Okay. So moving forward, our committee, the finance committee, we will no longer get in, try to schedule superintendent, business manager. Instead, we will schedule our meetings with simply the school committee. And it will be the school committee's responsibility to tell the town why they approved a budget. If they, in turn, need to have the business manager, if they want to have the superintendent, it will be the onus will be on them to make that happen. But we won't be reaching out to the superintendent or the business manager uh, for that meeting uh, moving forward. And I think it'll take a lot of the pressure off um, the communication. So um, what do you think about that? Is that? I think that's very good because we shouldn't be bypassing that committee. You're absolutely right. Totally agree. Yep. yep, absolutely. So if, if, the, if the school committees pass a budget, they should, they should at be. least be able to tell the town why they passed the budget, what's in the budget, and then, um, and then we'll move on from there. So, um, well, that came out of that meeting. So, one possible, I think. Anyway. I, I think it'll be interesting next year, talk to the school committee, see what kind of answers we get from the school committee, whether they seem satisfactory or whether they keep referring back to the business manager. Right. right. <laughs> no question. No question. We, we, because to be quite honest, that when the superintendent of schools is upset because you're asking questions about line items, then it tells me he hasn't been challenged about the line items from maybe anybody. Um, and I think that I think we have to come to um, terms with that and uh, we deal with the school committee. Donna? I, I think the awkward thing, and I, and I may be incorrect, so tell me if I'm wrong, is that the school committee and its members are simultaneously charged with being the advocates for the schools and providing budget oversight for the schools. That's correct. And, um, and maybe a conversation with them or with between you and its chair sometime about that as a challenging situation. Yeah. I can't think, well, of course, the budget is also so enormous. It's more than half of our town's budget. And, and I, I was shocked. I didn't realize the Frontier's budget is more than double the size of the town of Waitley's budget. I, mean, I just I looked at it. Yeah. But it's, that, I, I can't think, in my experience, of another situation that is it's unusual. Yeah, it, it, that matches no that. And, and it's a little bit of a conflict. Process. Yeah. Because, you know, we can look at it and say, well, we elect them and we pay them. They work for us. But, you know, they we do that so that they'll work for the kids, you know, in the school environment and it's just good. try to make that yeah. better. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Question also, 
<clears throat> as far as Wakeland Wakely Elementary goes, we can talk to our school committee. As far as the frontier budget, do we talk to the Wakely representative on the have frontier to. school committee? Because sure. I can't imagine that no. some of their Deerfield right. people would have any interest to talk. To. It would be our representatives to that committee. Um, <clears throat> And they have the option whether they'd like to bring the business manager or the superintendent. It's you know it's up to them. Um, but I I think that's how we should proceed. Um, all right, done. Brian, cool. Just the last item I just wanted to show you that this big spreadsheet that was updated that yep 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 Fred and I created three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the one that's 11 by 17. I'll share it here. So, but you got um, it on, yeah. Of course, it's not going to display well on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> So section one is shows the town operating budget. So this is sort of a summary overview of where we are currently. Um, and you see the tax rate above and the tax levy up here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this does not include personnel costs. Um, what did I say it was 55 something? Roughly if they were all. Really small. Anyways, I won't bore us with that. Um, 53. Oh, I know why. I don't know why they invented number lock. Someone explained it to me. <laughs> right, so that would, right here would be a total town operating budget. Um, and roughly this is what the corresponding tax rate and tax levy would be with that. Um, number two over here shows the tax rate calculations. Uh, there's assumptions about um, uh, tax rate, uh, I'm sorry, expenses and revenue here uh, that are uh, in one of those other self spreadsheets that I showed you. Anyways, put it in the mixer and that's what comes out on top there. Um, but we don't have to go through it in detail. Here, capital, I want, this is what I really wanted to touch on. Number three here, capital projects and other miscellaneous expenditures. Right, and we keep a running, we keep a running tab of free cash up the top there, um, mm -hmm. up here, right? Yep. Um, and number four over here is our account balances. Um, I'm going to hide that for a second. So these are the projects. So here we have the capital, uh, the capital improvement uh, recommended recommendations from the capital improvement planning committee for these items. Um, from sixty six, there's a different shade here. It's really hard to see. <clears throat> sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine are non capital requests for expenditures. Um, mm -hmm. Senior Center Phase Two Need Study. That's a and that's a space study. And then the spelling in A six B eight the Iver. Yeah, that's a new thing we call. <laughs> um, so that would be um, so the Senior Center is a space needs assessment for that. Frontier has a, a capital request to replace a walk-in cooler, employee reiterament payout. So that's. Um, because the one's retiring, there's going to be um, there's a provision in the personnel policy, which talks about um, uh, payouts for people who retire after a certain amount of years. Um, there's a request for police reform expenditures, and there's also columns here, uh, rows here, if we want to do any sort of uh, transfers to any of our stabilization funds. And this is just a first a first take as to how we might fund these items. Uh, if we funded them as they currently sit right here, that's our free cash remaining is 75037 Typically, we like to have around 200000 yep. um, in free cash. Um, 
So we may have to think about in this, I'm sorry, let me just but that add mean... one more thing. Okay. Um, and then the $200,000 revenue to reduce the tax rate, which is totally optional. Right. The right. town has done that over yeah. the past, I think it's five, six years. Um, so that's that's also included in that, in that calculation. Uh, and over here, um, number four over here, these are the <coughs> these are our balances. Um, those are the expenditures. And, I don't like how this is showing, but um, that's what we're remaining out of those. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we, the, the, there's the only thing we're- Each state was able to. Okay. Yeah, the only thing we're recommending for vehicle stabilization is to fund the new uh, police cruiser. Yeah. Everything else would be more cash. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have to, right. but that's just how it was. That's what we look at. Wow. So it kind of gives us a check in as to so how things you are. You can't project what certified would be for the coming year. I mean, you don't know that until uh from the, uh, from right we we don't have a good sense until we close yeah until we close uh, the books on what, that year but what has it been um it, it's usually somewhere between 400 to 600 thousand um but that's all but we're also carrying over so yeah um so so two to four hundred thousand yeah i was gonna ask where where's your estimate for your free cash baseline is coming from. Oh, uh, uh, this one right here. Yeah. Um, so that's a certified amount um, minus any any special town meeting, previous special town meeting appropriations. Okay, but so, that doesn't take into account any new additions in this fiscal year. No, they only recertify free cash at the end of the fiscal year. So there is so, so there is. Um, a complicate things. When we voted to show that we had money for the Hurley Park project, right? So there's a hundred and something, it's a hundred and some change dollars in free cash that will be coming back into this once we vote that CPA monies. Right. So it's, so, so it exists. That, that free cash remaining should be more like 175 than 75. Yes. But it's technically not free cash now because it's been appropriated, but it's not going to be spent, but it will come back into free cash when we put it there. Okay. So there really is about 110, 100 and, an additional $110,000 on top of that. Okay. okay. That, so 110 on top of that, so almost 200. How long will we have to live with that? With which, which part? With the 200,000 free, free cash. Um, so free cash will be available once it gets recertified, which is typically October. October. I think typically. Yeah, so you're looking at about four or five months of having to live with two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Plus the, you know, we have the stabilization is always available, right? Free cash. Right. Free cash goes away yeah. from June thirtieth till yeah. whenever we recertify it. So October. We can always go to town meeting do a stabilization transfer and. Brian, can you put in an extra column for ARPA? Where would you spend all that money? I can't. Yep. So, so I think because I think that some of these capital projects that are now coming out free cash is well, the committee hasn't made any recommendations yet. I would think that quite a few of the, those projects would come out of ARPA money rather than out of free cash. Okay. So that's a conversation that yeah. that the finance committee and select board need to have. Right. But, but I think we, we, talk we need a column there to to slide some of that into if that comes to pass. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's around four hundred fifty thousand right. in uh, one of our local fiscal recovery funds. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, that committee has been slow going, as two of you know, because you're on it. I know. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll try to move that along. We've got a meeting scheduled for What's next Monday. Monday. Next yeah, Monday. yeah. Um, next, next Monday. And, and we should try to push to, yeah. to have some of these. And I look at these, and I, I, I think some of these, I wonder whether we could 
let's push some of these off um, without either to either to the CLFRF funds or we just have to wait a year if we, if we need to because um, one of the things that sticks out is there's a lot of money for, for the elementary school here and we've invested a lot of money in the, in the elementary school sure. every year and while while I understand the need for it it's it's taking up a uh, I don't want to say disproportionate amount of our capital expenditures but a, a good deal of them over the past couple of years so I don't think we would ever be accused of, of not investing in the elementary school. No, I don't believe that be true. So, okay, I do think that that free cash number will go up both between the 110 that will be coming back into it. And money that's not going to be spent out of free cash, but out of another source. I don't think we're in a bad spot with that, you know, at all. The, the town continues to be in a very, a very good position financially. Yeah. Um, what's really whacked us this year was, well, just to be honest, it was the frontier assessment yeah. of one hundred thirty thousand right. right. dollars. That's that's more than we typically have in a year's increase over our town total budget. Yeah. Um, and it, we're in a tough position because we don't have a lot of control over that, yeah. and nobody likes to. Forced to eat their lunch, but right. it kind of and we got a decrease in it last year. Mm -hmm. So right, we did. We, 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 we were very thankful for last say, year. So you never get a decrease. You, it's just a just a less. Robin on who gets a year off. Yeah. So are we good? Good. Make yeah. make a motion to close right. meeting. I make a motion to close this meeting. Very good. All those in favor? Donna. Aye. 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 I complete you all in agreement. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Finance committee.